you know, if we, if, when people claim that science will tell you all truth, that's, there's a name for that. It's, it's its own kind of faith. It's scientism. And it's very myopic. But when you read it, there's something in you, like, like a musician knows when the instrument's played right and it's beautiful. There's something in you that comes alive and knows that there's a truth there, that it's like your strings are being plucked by the master. We have to talk about this. We can't just sweep this under the rug and act like it didn't happen. Rosalind Picard is a highly educated and accomplished woman. She is a scholar, an inventor, and a professor of science at MIT, who like many scientists was an atheist. And in this video, she is going to share her journey to God. There are two separate clips. This first one is her with Lex Friedman. Let's check it out. So I've heard you speak about your journey in finding faith. Sure. Uh -huh. uh, and how you discovered some wisdoms about life and beyond the, from reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I've also heard you say that you said scientists too often assume that nothing exists beyond what can be uh, currently measured. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. Materialism. Materialism. And right. scientism. Yeah. So in some sense, this assumption enables the near-term scientific method, uh, assuming that we can um, uncover the mysteries of this world by the mechanisms of measurement that we currently have. Uh, but we easily forget that we've made this assumption. Right? Mm -hmm. so, so what do you think we miss out on by making that assumption? That hmm. It's fine to limit the scientific method to things we can measure and reason about and reproduce. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I think we have to recognize that sometimes we scientists also believe in things that happen historically. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I believe the Holocaust happened. I can't prove events from past history scientifically. You prove them with historical evidence, right? With the impact they had on people, with eyewitness testimony and, and things like that. Mm. Real quick, I want to highlight the importance of what she just said right there. Those two things that she just mentioned, historical evidence and eyewitness testimony, is why the case for Christ is undeniably truth, primarily because it is hinging on the resurrection of Christ. We're talking about eyewitness testimonies that saw him die and over 500 people that saw him resurrected. So... A, a good thinker recognizes that science is one of many ways to get knowledge. It's not the only way. And there, there's been some really bad philosophy and bad thinking recently, you can call it scientism, where people say science is the only way to get to truth. And it's not. It, it just isn't. There are other ways that work also, like knowledge of love with someone. You don't, you don't prove your love through science. Right. Uh, so history, philosophy, love, <laughs> a lot of other things in life uh, show us that there's more ways to gain knowledge and truth, if you're willing to believe there is such a thing, and I, I believe there is, uh, than science. I do. I am a scientist, however, and in my science, I do limit my science to the things that the scientific method can can do. But I recognize that it's myopic to say that that's all there is. Right, there's, just like you listed, there's all the why questions. And really, mm -hmm. we, we know, if we're being honest with ourselves, the percent of what we really know is is uh, basically zero relative to the full <laughs> mystery of the... That's measure theory, a set of measure zero, if I have a finite <laughs> amount of knowledge, which I do. Uh, so you said that you believe in truth. Uh, so let me... Ask that old question. Uh, what What do you think this thing is all about? It's life on Earth, life, the universe, and everything. I, and I everything. can't. What's I the can't meaning? Quote Douglas Adams. Yeah. Forty two. <laughs> my favorite number. So By the way, that's 42. my street address. My husband and I oh, wow. guessed to the exact same number for our house. We 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 got to pick it. Okay, <laughs> and there's a reason we picked forty two. Yeah. So is it just forty two, or is there? Do you have other words that you can put around it? Well, I think there's a grand adventure, and I think this life is a part of it. I think there's a lot more to it than meets the eye and the heart and the mind and the soul here. I think we, we see but through a glass dimly in this life. We see 
only a part of all there is to know. If if people haven't read the the Bible, they should if they consider themselves educated. And you could read Proverbs and find tremendous wisdom in there that cannot be scientifically proven, but when you read it, there's something in you, like like a musician knows when the instrument's played right and it's beautiful. There's something in you that comes alive and knows that there's a truth there, that it's like your strings are being plucked by the master instead of by me, <laughs> right, playing when I pluck it. But probably when you play, it sounds spectacular, right? And when you when you encounter those truths, there's something in you that sings and knows that there is more than what I can prove mathematically or program a computer to do. Don't get me wrong, the math is gorgeous. The computer programming can be brilliant. It's inspiring, right? We want to do more. Uh, none of this squashes my desire to do science or to get knowledge through science. I, I'm, not, I'm not dissing the science at all. I grow even more in awe of what the science can do because I'm more in awe of all there is we don't know. And really at the heart of science, you have to have a belief that there's truth, that there's something greater to be discovered. And some scientists may not want to use the faith word, but it's faith that drives us to do science. It's faith that there is truth, that there's something to know that we don't know, that it's worth knowing, that it's worth working hard, and that there is meaning, that there is such a thing as meaning, which, by the way, science can't prove either. Uh, we have to kind of start with some assumptions that there's things like truth and meaning. And these are really questions philosophers uh, own, right? This is their space of philosophers and theologians at some level. So these are things science, uh, you know, if we, if, when people claim that science will tell you all truth, that's, there's a name for that. It's its its own kind of faith. It's scientism. And it's very myopic. Yeah, there's a much bigger world out there to be explored in, in ways that science may not, at least for now, allow us to explore. Yeah. And there's meaning and purpose and hope and joy and love and all these awesome things that make it all worthwhile, too. Wow. That was an incredible explanation, especially coming from someone who once trusted in science and not in God. That just makes it that much more beautiful. To connect what she said to Scripture even deeper, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So when you read the Bible, there is this inner witness that it is truth and it comes alive inside of you. Can I ask you a question? What is your faith in? We all put our faith in something. Prior to conversion, Rosalind's faith was in science, but she came to an understanding that that was nearsighted. Let's look at this next clip where she describes how she put her faith in the depth of Christianity. I was not always a Christian. I was an atheist for the first part of my life and was challenged by uh, people who I actually really admired, uh, who are Christians, that maybe I should learn a little bit more uh, and get a little bit more data to go with my views. Uh, my views at the time were that uh, Christians and actually all religions, I was pretty antagonistic toward, uh, were people who really didn't know their science or didn't, uh, or maybe they needed a crutch or something. I really didn't think they were that smart. Then I started to realize that many of such people were super smart, uh, and they challenged me to read the best-selling book of all time, uh, which is probably still the Bible, um, the Hebrew and Old Testament and uh, Christian New Testament. And I, uh, as I was reading that to my, uh, against my desires, I started to change my mind about some things. And then I thought, oh gosh, okay, if this book is influencing me to change my mind toward Christianity or toward belief in God, maybe I should study other world religions. So I started to do that. And as I uh, started learning more and more about different world religions, uh, I meeting um, people from those religions and going to temples and mosques and others, 
uh, I started to realize uh, that not only did I have a lot to learn, but I was on a journey that was starting to make me not only believe in God even more, uh, but as I got dragged off to some Christian churches, which I resisted in the beginning, uh, and found somewhere I could ask questions, very important, uh, I started to realize that the religion was not at all what I thought it was, and that there were some really interesting and very attractive elements uh, that were very uh, historically verified also, uh, not at all what I expected. And as I learned about that, I uh, changed my viewpoint gradually from an atheist to an agnostic to a theist to somebody who actually believed that uh, the historical Jesus and the New Testaments, what's written about him was true. Uh, it sounds a little wacky to those who may not come from that background. It was not an easy process. But as I did that, and then I was challenged to not only um, believe this, but to put it to practice, that's where things started to really make a difference in my life. And actually, the real reason I'm here right now, spending time talking about something like this, as opposed to just my research, is because it has made a huge difference in my life. And it, I, um, part of the Christian faith is that there's a gift for everybody in the world, whether you're raised Christian or Hindu or Muslim or Buddhist or atheist or uh, any of a long list of backgrounds. There's a, a gift for everybody there. And um, when I accepted that gift, uh, it made a huge difference in my life uh, for the better, big improvement. So I didn't realize it needed so much improving at the time. Uh, those around me saw the difference. And um, today it is my source of strength, uh, an amazing source of peace and joy and uh, wisdom. And as I think when we build machines and build computers with affective abilities and robots, I often think of the analogy of one who is very wise giving us instructions and giving us guidance and being there when uh, when we don't know what to do. So I find that um, still is powerful in my work today. Listening to her speak about her testimony, it was poetic and refreshing. She received the gift, the same gift God offers to all humanity. We love gifts, don't we? It's nothing like the gifts that you get on Christmas or the gifts that you get on your birthday. And without fail, you remove the wrapping, you open it up, and you find out what's inside, and then you make use of it. When you open up the gift of God and you find out what's inside, and you begin to use it and you apply it to your life, life gets that much more amazing. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. Let me know what you think in the comment section and subscribe to the channel. It really does help us reach more people. And also, you might want to check out this next video that YouTube is recommending for you to watch. And remember, we all have a mind, but there's no better mind than the mind of God.